evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Shelley Tasker Show here, coming out with speakfreeradio.com. It's good to have your company. Today's date is Wednesday, 6th of March, 2024. So, great guests lined up this evening. Uh, a few people have asked over the last couple of years, and uh, I'm glad to have finally made contact with this guest. And uh, I don't think he really needs much of a introduction, but we've got Mark Windows, Windows on the World, who's come to join us. Mark has been a researcher, done videos, various things for the last, oh, I think about 19 years, since 2005. So I'm going to bring him on anyway. Good evening, Mark. Hi, Shelley. How are you doing, my lovely? I'm great. Absolutely fine. Looking forward to this. Good. Great. I like to hear that. <laughs> so as I said to you just now quickly, I was like, right, what should we talk about? All the things I don't know, my brain's just not steered properly at the moment. I think when I'm given too much um, choice and it's like, what shall we talk about? So Yeah, I, I do think exactly we... the same thing. My brain goes all over the place thinking, yeah, yeah. just give me an in, just give me an in. Start somewhere and I'll be fine, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I thought what, what we really need to hit on is what you talk a lot about, actually, communitarianism. Yes. And like, as I said to you, like, just as well, like a, a, a gentle introduction for those that haven't got a clue what it is and what it's yeah. about. Um, so, yeah, over to you. Yeah, well, communitarianism is a word that a lot of people don't know about, but it's actually as old as the word communism. In fact, it dates from the same time. 1841 was when John Goodwin Barnby formed the Communist uh, League in London. And the Communitarian Association was also formed by John Goodwin Barnby. And there was even a magazine, and it was also described as a church. You can look up that if you want to look at the background of communitarianism, but it's actually a way of steering people into what they would call a consensus. People call it a consensus. It means it looks like everyone's agreed, and that's the trick. Now, the whole point of it was that around 2010, I started to see a big sea change in the way councils and public officials dealt with people, and also the courts. I noticed there was a big change in what was happening in the courts. And it was all about the time of Cameron's big society. And the word communitarianism was used, but not very much. It's a word that's kind of behind the scenes. So if we look at the history of communitarianism, it's, it's linked with communism. But it was later described as pertaining to a community, whereas originally the word meant of communistic ideas. So there's a big change in the way that they described it. And that was in the early 1900s. But we get certain MPs in the UK talking of communitarianism. But what I'd noticed and what backs it all up is the big society in 2010, where Cameron said that they were going to be using communitarianism and Saul Alinsky rules. Now, Saul Alinsky was a radical campaigner in the early 60s. He wrote a book called Rules for Radicals and dedicated that book to Lucifer, who we called the first rebel. And basically what it was about was he was trying to empower people to take their own power. In other words, stand in their own power. And these techniques were very effective, but they were very communistic and very Marxist, very extreme. And it meant that if someone's in the way, you basically take them down. I'm summarizing here, but read Rules for Radicals. You can actually download it at winnersontheworld.net on the free books page. But there are 13 rules for radicals. And basically what they do is they take out the opposition and they do very audacious things which get them attention. And he was empowering people, poor people who were, had poor housing. And he was taking these groups and he was making them, well, they're kind of radicalizing them in a way. But to bring it up to date, what happened in 2010 was we saw a lot of these people we'd, we'd call change agents coming into local governance and they were getting put into all public facing jobs and this was the communitarian society so basically i started to notice how things were changing and that's when i really got hold of communitarianism then we got the new impositions like the road closures in waltham forest around 2012 2014 by 2014 it was steaming ahead and they brought in a change agent called clyde lokes who then went to oversee livability in Oxford. Of course, Oxford now is pretty much locked down and they're saying that you're going to get fined from going from one area to another. They're openly saying that. But I saw the inception of it in Waltham Forest and I saw how they brought in people to steer public opinion. In other words, the public 
who were the native population weren't really being asked, but people were being brought in on their behalf. And all these people were steering things in the same direction. So what you could say is communitarianism is where all rights come with social responsibilities. Hence, we get things like social justice, social equity. And what it means is that everybody appears to have a voice. So you will get these pressure groups turning up and they'll be lobbying for what the agenda actually is. So in other words, if they want to close the roads off, they'll bring in a load of cycling lobbyist groups and people who are anti-car. For instance, there's a group called Mums for Lungs. They seem to be everywhere. There's lots of these organisations and they are a multipolar front of what you could call controlled opposition because some of them actually will oppose what the council are bringing in, but generally they're steering groups. So communitarianism is the idea that everybody is integrated into a community. But the trick is this, the community is not you, it's them. So communitarianism masquerades as community, but it's an imposition from above that masquerades as community. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, yes, I think so, yeah. I'm thinking along the lines as well, like the like uh, stop oil protesters and stuff like that. Yes, because well, there's a, there's a phrase that's really good, Shelley. It's that the globalists need the anti-globalists to implement their policies. So what right. they do is the communitarian thing is they play both sides. So in other words, everyone gets a voice, but the agenda's going in one direction, and that's what the ju just stop oil came out of. It's a very good point you brought up, by the way, because this is a this is a, a, a very good steering group. So what they're doing under the banner of community, they're getting people together to take action. And this this direct action comes from communitarianism. It means that the opposition is controlled. It really goes back to tenets of co communism. You know, if you look at the history of communism, you'll find this sort of stuff went on, especially uh, Marxism. It's it's a way of controlling both sides. So Just Stop Oil uh, came out of organisations such as Extinction Rebellion. Extinction Rebellion is a controlled opposition protest group really out of the city of London. And you say that to climate activists and they won't believe you because they don't believe that the climate action came out of the state, the UN goals and also uh, oil billionaires and people who were in the banking industry. So climate change came out of that. So, so are they be they could be brainwashed then, supposedly, to fight they genuinely believe though what they're fighting for is yes, that's course. very important. So so the idea of community is that everyone has voice, you see. So everyone feels as though that they've participated when in fact they haven't. And Amatai Sione called this the responsive community. And he wrote intellectually about this. He was born Werner Falk in the 1930s. He advised the Clintons. So if you look at the policy decisions that the Clintons made, especially Hillary, she has been really influenced by Amatai Etzioni. And no one would know this because these names are not in the public. So therefore, people don't know what communitarianism is. But it's the system we're living in in Britain at the moment. It's actually the system. And people are getting to know this because they're going, well, wait a minute, we didn't vote for this. And they say we did. Because What's happening is change agents are coming in on your behalf and they are basically the voice of the public. So this is what all the councils were doing. And then I found how it was linked to these groups and protest groups. Yeah, we can talk about that first because that's quite important. So Extinction Rebellion came out of a thing uh, called Climate Camp Action. Climate Camp Action was an undercover police and MI5 operation which took over the finances of Occupy St. Paul's and basically took the money. Then they started a thing called Democracy Village, which evicted Brian Hoare and Barbara Tucker, these peace campaigners. People not may not remember this. It was a long time ago, about 20 years ago, Brian Hoare was on Parliament Square protesting against the Iraq war, and they needed to stop people doing that. So this, they opened this thing called, called Democracy Village, and it was all the people who'd taken over Occupy, because Occupy was originally about the financial state of the world and the big corporate interests and the banking industry. But it quickly got taken over when Soros got involved 
in this communitarian way of citizens' assemblies. They had people's assemblies. So when we see this template, Shelley, it's all the same. So if you've got a citizens' assembly on climate change or a people's assembly at Occupy, they all do the same thing and they all work under the same principles, these communitarian steering principles. So you will have people come in who call themselves facilitators. You'll have co-facilitators. And these people are often private employees and they're there just to steer the public so in other words what happens is that you get steered down some some choices it looks like you're being given a choice but the intended outcome is all they're steering you into so they 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 block out anything that's in the way and they get rid of all the people that oppose it and eventually they've got what they want and it's the same with protests so i did a lot of investigation into extinction rebellion and found that they were from this organization originally called Compassionate Revolution. And the managing director of that was one of the people who was directly involved with Democracy Village, the MI5 operation, to get Brian Hoare and Barbara Tucker off Parliament Square. So there we see it's all connected. So from Occupy, we get Climate Camp Action, which was basically a lot of undercover police. And if you look at the undercover policing inquiry, you'll find the information in there. We put an article out called COVID Protest Social Engineers, and that shows how the COVID protests were steered. So what I find is it's all the same stuff. So people need to know that when they're offered something, it's for a reason. If you're being offered a protest, it's for a reason. Remember, all protests have to be sanctioned by the state. So it means that you are being steered and we can talk about the solutions to that a bit later. But to, to kind of outline this, it means that you've got organizations both for and against an agenda. So what this means, in effect, is that if you're in a local area and you want to get involved in something or you start up a group, that group will usually be infiltrated by change agents. And people go, that sounds mad. That sounds paranoid. It's not. This is actually how they do it. So it neutralizes the opposition. And it's only really what they did in times of communism, you see. But people who've lived under communism can get this as people in Britain haven't. They find it more difficult to get because they still have this word democracy going around in their head, which doesn't really exist anymore. No, no. So, that I think the main thing about communitarianism is it's a steering mechanism. It masquerades as community, but it's an imposition from above. And it means that all rights come with responsibilities. Hence, we get people being thrown into prison for putting stickers up saying white lives matter and these other things. And I think he put a few more things that were slightly more extreme than that, this fellow, this Sam what was his name? Sam, I think. It was David Curtin was talking about him the other day. Yeah, yeah. I've been traveling quite a lot, so I'm, I'm not picking things up. But but basically got a year in prison and there was nothing really offensive about those stickers. And that is communitarian law because in communitarian law, innocent people don't get accused. Now, just think about that. Think about what that means, because you are presumed to be guilty. And I saw a great example of this when a friend of mine was accused of a crime that they didn't do. And it was hustled through the court in a way that would not happen in a third world country. I'll give you an example. I knew a Pakistani barrister who worked with immigration in the UK, but he'd worked in a lot of cases in Pakistan. He said, in my country, uh, the corruption's kind of open, but in Britain, it's closed. So in other words, people think that there's something going on, which comes down to some kind of jury and um, a judge, but it's not like that at all. Most of the cases are predetermined. And people would find that really difficult to accept. But it is true, unfortunately. Yeah. So mo most cases, I know I've got a friend and his mum used to work in the court system yeah. and she said the same. It's already, um, which makes me think like, um, like we chatted about briefly before the show, like yeah. my dad going down for what yeah. he did. Um, that was yes. already decided because when I brought up certain things as well, the barrister, what about free speech? And she was like, well, let's not get into that. And it's like, what do you mean? Let's not get into that. That's like key, key subjects, you know, key yeah. topic. But um, yeah, it, it gets me thinking, because I think a lot of us are seen over the whole COVID times and stuff like that, like um, Extinction Rebellion being involved and the whole Black Lives Matter thing as well. All of these groups, Shelley, it's quite important. This, all of these groups are what they call a system of moods. So in other words, they're all they're all there to attack people who do not fall into line. 
So say Antifa used to get Black Bloc and these anarchist groups. Now, I found out a lot of these anarchist groups were directly linked to the police. I found that. That's one of the first things I found out at Occupy. There was a place where all these so-called anarchist groups were based. And that was also where the Bank of Ideas was based. And that was a fake squat set up in the city of London. Who squats in the city of London? Nobody, especially if it's a Swiss bank. So it was very revealing as to who was involved. And yes, it linked into undercover police and it, it linked into what became this new protest system. So basically what it means is that these groups are there to steer people. So if, if there's a group who might be getting too near to the truth, they'll send in Antifa. And you get people like Hope Not Hate who will do that. And Antifa are a prescribed terrorist organization by definition. And they are supported by these lobbying groups. This is communitarianism. There's a think tank called Demos. And they put a paper out in around 2010. We had a debate with them, actually, about 9-11. They couldn't debate the evidence. They debated how we were allowed to talk about it and what we were allowed to say. So the paper from Demos, it, it stated that the new democracy will work with a combination of government open infiltration and citizens groups taking direct action. And that's all people need to know. So if that's the new democracy, well, it's not democracy. Because with government open infiltration, that's not democracy. And with citizens groups taking direct action, direct action is the name that's given to this communitarian resistance. So in other words, when you see direct, direct action or grassroots, it's them, it's not you. That's very important. So I found out hundreds of these groups were linked in, and it's like a, it's a spider's web. So at the top, you've got all these, these organizations that will train uh, people in local government, training future leaders, they call it, training future leaders. And they set up things like community interest companies and NGOs. So how this works is that the public are being steered through these NGOs. So it doesn't matter in a way whether it's a protest thing or it's the council. They're using the same template and the template's very simple. So if, if it's the council, they have these partners called stakeholders, but they're all lobbying for one thing, for the sustainable development goals. And the, the thing is that all the people who are in public office are trained into this. So it's not as if you can go to them and reason with them. They've already worked out what the outcome's going to be. And that's what people need to realize, that they are not being given a, given a choice. And, and that's whether in protest or in your local council, whether it's a general assembly at the old Occupy or a citizen's assembly on climate change, they work in exactly the same way and they're steered by exactly the same type of people. So once people realize that this system is incredibly simple, then they'll know it's a template. And then you can try and usurp it. Because one thing I would say is that these people are very audacious, they're very belligerent, but they're not very bright. So a little bit of ingenuity can go a long way. So like, say the, like for the council councils and stuff like that, and I mean, this whole green plan, the council's been planning mm. for years. Are you saying like that people opposing these things is pointless? No, I'm not because saying that at all. I'm not, saying the opposite. No. I'm saying, right. no, no, this is, this is the most important point. People mix up activism with actually planning something and executing it successfully. The word activism has been highlight, hijacked. So what they want you to do is get out with banners and protest because that doesn't achieve anything. It may do if, if people are focused on a particular outcome. But what tends to happen with these protest groups is they're infiltrated and steered into exactly the direction that the, that the state wants them to go in, which is either nowhere or they split them up and cause infighting and, and it, it kind of fizzles out. So when you see these organized protests, it's best to form your own cells, two or three people, and become part of a larger group. And 
I have a manifesto which I can read out to you. I actually put it on that David Curtin show as well we did because it'll just give you some idea of, of how this works. Um, hang on a minute, I've got it in here somewhere. It's... It's just it's just good to read it out. Mission statement. Yeah, it's quite old. It's in an article actually called Empower Your Community. And right, and that's on your website. It is, yeah. I mean, right. once you get the hang of this, it's not as co it might seem like a bit of a stretch for people, but once you get it, it's very simple. They're, they're not doing anything very complicated. It's just that I don't think people realize how big this is. It's global, it's in every country, and it escalated massively around 2010 with the so-called big society where no one was going to be left behind, all voices would be heard. And it took me a while to put it together. And there was a lady called Nikki Rapana who'd written a book called The Anti-Communitarian Handbook. And she'd written that in 2010. And I read that, I thought, that's exactly what I was talking about in the UK. So it's what we're talking about here is a highly organized system, but a very simple system. So to, to avoid co being collectivized, this is an example. It's in that article, Empower Your Community. P maybe people like to think about this. We are an unaffiliated group of local residents concerned about the lack of democratic process in local government planning and policy. We will remain unaffiliated as individuals acting collectively and within the law towards a truly inclusive democratic process where all voices are heard. That's important, Shelley, because what they say is all voices will be heard. You have to use their language. This is a new form of language through sustainable development. We, will not, we are not affiliated with any group or organization whatsoever. Now, that's very, very important because the first thing they're going to do is link you to something far right or full of hate. But this does not mean that we do or not. End, sorry, this does not mean that we do or do not endorse other groups. We do not agree with arriving at consensus through being steered into predetermined outcomes by trained facilitators, either working for the council or public private partnerships. We deem this to be against the public interest and an affront to democracy. So once this simple system sinks in, that will make complete sense to you. Because what you're doing is you're ticking their boxes, and that's something you can put at, at, at the end of an email or you can use it as your mission statement. And they don't like it because it means that they can't attack you, you right. see. Because the Saul Alinsky rules mean that they will attack you. Look at the Saul Alinsky rules for radicals. You see, around 2010, I was in touch with a lot of people up and down the country, and the same system was being brought in on different tiers of audacity, shall we call it. So people would turn up in your local town, village, or city, who had, had been brought in to steer the sustainable development goals and the, the new agenda, which is all the LTNs that we see now. And the whole fake green agenda is, is what is in front of this. But what we have to remember is that this is not an environmental program. It is not an environmental program. Otmar Edenhofer, who was from the Mercator Institute, and he's like one of the global leaders in climate policy, says we must separate ourselves from the idea that environmentalism is about climate policy. They have nothing to do with each other or very little. So what he's saying is that we are going to redistribute the world's wealth. Now, look at what redistribution of wealth means. That doesn't mean what we think it means. It means bringing down the West. And this has been going on since the Lima Declaration in 1975. But you've got people like Maurice Strong at the Rio Earth Summit saying, isn't it our duty to bring down Western democracies? Hence, you get people like Soros, who in, it was actually involved with a thing called Involve.org. Involve.org is how you were stated to be represented. But I'll just get back to this Otmar Edenhofer thing, right? That, and these people, they're basically, the people who are driving this know it is not an environmental program. So first of all, the people who are driving it are people like 
It's just stop oil, Extinction Rebellion. Because Extinction Rebellion was set up to c communitize protest and it's direct action. So hence you get pensioners gluing themselves to roads and to windows and doors and, and stuff like this, right? That's called direct <laughs> action. It's a public display of theater and nothing else. But it gets attention and it winds up the people who they want to get wound up. In other words, the motorists. Everything is do Everything that's being done is to get rid of private transport, first of all. That is mega important. That's what the 15-minute sit-down cities and the ULES zones and the Oxford livability scheme is all about. So we're talking about one agenda here. It's not environmental. That's the, that's the trick. It has nothing to do with the environment. It's control, management, and depopulation because these people decided quite a long time ago through organizations such as the Club of Rome that mankind was the common enemy of itself. And they had several reports into this. One was called um, Limits to Growth, The Limits to Growth, which came out um, before a thing called, um, hang on a minute, it's the, the First Global Revolution. So we have these two documents and the First Global Revolution came out in the 90s. The other document came out, I think, in the late 70s or 80s. And that was um, limits to growth, which which basically went on the Malthusian idea that we were using too much stuff and we would overpopulate the planet. Now, this, again, is flawed. So it's a bit like the climate change thing. The, the climate change so-called science is absolutely ridiculous. But we've got now a point where people have been communitarianized into a belief system because what the new religion is Gaia. It's the worship of the earth. And we're a cancer on the earth. And this was all brought in through people like Robert Mueller at the UN. I'm throwing this stuff so people can research it, Shelley, not to be, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, no, it's, it's great because when, whenever I say anything, like any, when the environment, um, climate change things come up and I say, oh, what a load of rubbish, blah, blah, blah. People yes. are like, you don't seriously believe that, do you? And you yeah. like find yourself trying to educate them about CO2 and stuff like that. And it's, they have been yeah. brainwashed. You know. Yeah, it's very difficult. You see, this is another thing about the, the big society and communitarianism. It weaponizes people. It's actually everything about communitarianism is a deception. It's not what it appears to be. If it was, it wouldn't be that bad. But it's 10 times worse because when they talk about community, it's nothing to do with you. It's always them. And so, I just see it yes. everywhere since I've been learning bits and watching snippets of you and stuff, you know, like the whole... Once plant you see it, Kelly, you can't unsee it, can you? you? Exactly. It's everywhere. Yeah. And like even the whole plant-based thing that they've been pushing for like the last couple of years. And now like we know that they're trying to get us to eat less meat. It's like you just see how it's working now, how they've built up the other side to try yeah. and like weigh out that we don't need the meat. Yeah, it is it's everywhere. Yeah, they weaponize so, people. It's, it's, it's yeah. biological weaponization of, of humans. And this goes into lots of different areas. You know, I mean, they they use at the lower end. I think they've got a bit slicker and more corporate with it now. But about 15 years ago, they used a lot of mentally ill people at protests to kick off and stuff like that. Um, the intelligence services have always done that. So it, it was very weaponized. It was more weaponized in a in a more dangerous way years ago. But what seems to have happened is that these homogenized groups, such as Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil, they've dumbed it down so much that these people are no danger to anybody, apart from themselves, of course. So they, they don't need as many agent provocateurs. They used to be a lot of very aggressive agent provocateurs. We found out that some of them were police informers. You can look at even the state's... Um, uh, undercover policing inquiry where you had people like Dave Jones who was in the Wombles you know those people who dressed up with the yeah, cardboard yeah. boxes and stuff on they, these people and they, climate camp action was him you see so when I was studying the Occupy thing the, the communitarianism thing came together then because it's all one system so what they were doing there is the same as they're doing in your town hall it doesn't matter whether it's a protest group or the meeting in your town hall they're the same template facilitators steering you into a predetermined outcome. That's all it is. 
Right. And and one of the videos that I watched actually was you in um the Glastonbury and 5G council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and audio loved... with the commentary on it, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I loved it because I went to a council meeting. I, I won't go into it, but I never I went in totally unprepared in the fact that they know what to say. Yes. I, I, I was played big time and it, it was a whole new ball game for me. I think I I think I know like I've got a bit of an argument to go on and stuff like that. And then actually it wasn't until I got home and I was like, he really hoodwinked. He knew I was gonna be there. He knew the things to say and I was speechless, but you have to go in prepared and like you were, the comments and stuff, and I realised that they're all trained to like and you know, answer you back with a question, they avoid the question and stuff like that. But you know, the simple answers, like I think when somebody said like uh, about what harm 5G is and somebody said, well, a cooked breakfast is harmful as well. And it's like, just like, well, I, I, I loved it when, when one of them said in a sort of Benny Hill voice, well, in Victorian times, they thought that if you went more than 15 miles an hour, your head would explode. <laughs> just like, what is it? I mean, but I think the thing is, Shelley, the point here is that you're dealing with people who aren't very bright, but they're very cunning and audacious. Yeah, yeah. And they do not play straight. You, you must realise that we're not in a democratic system. Do, do you think they're yeah. taught to be like that in that yes. role? Because yes, people are. always say, oh, don't go for a councillor because every good person ends up corrupt. Well, I don't know whether that's true because there are people doing it now. But the thing is that they're facing opposition, especially... Right. You know, we've got the, the Heritage Party. David Curtin is the only person, only political leader, who is actually opposing Agenda 2030 in any way that is coherent and will work. But, of course, it's completely marginalised. But people have to realise that if they don't take, take back their own power, this is a sign, you see. Basically, with communitarianism, um, you, you are assumed to agree and you are given these limited outlets for your frustrations but the plan is going forward and it will not stop no political party the labor conservatives or the lib dems they will not stop it they're all on board all of them so you can't do it through the party political system as we know it you can do it through the fringe parties like heritage party or People have to start standing as councillors and they will get elected. These people are not popular and they're, 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 they're there because people haven't stood up against them. And that's something we all have to take responsibility for. We can't just sit back and say there's nothing we can do about it, because if we do that, then this will not stop because they are going very fast now, as you know. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised there a couple of months ago when, um, you know, suddenly all of these 20 miles an hour signs popped up. It was like, oh, wow. You know, and they've got like a speed detector at the end of the road that flashes if you're going too fast and stuff. And it's yeah. like, where the hell did that come from? We didn't get, you know, you don't get any notice, do you? And the council say, oh, we put an ad on our Facebook page and stuff. And it's like, do you know what? The majority of, um, you know, people, elderly people, they don't go on Facebook. They... No, uh, this is a good point as well. If if they're going to bring in something, they'll say, yes, we told you. Yeah, well, it doesn't yeah. matter where they've printed it. If you didn't see it, then obviously it's your problem because you didn't see it. And this is how they do it. So they'll advertise meetings and consultations, of course, when people won't turn up. They won't know about them. and and Because obviously they don't want people there because no, no. that would cause extra trouble. So... For instance, I went to the Elephant Castle regeneration, and that that's a massive area that they're regenerating. You know, it's it's going to be a complete smart city, the whole place. And there was there was about hundred people there. They put us on tables of ten. This is where, by the way, I don't know whether I finished that thing about about Soros. Involved.org was the NGO which oversaw the citizens' assemblies, like the one in Oxford and Birmingham. The first citizens' right. assemblies were involved.org. And if you look on their website, you'll see just what I'm talking about. People sat around a table. Ten people sat around a table, a facilitator on each table. They ask you open questions, and, and basically they bin anything they don't want. And then they, they ask you very steered questions, such as, would you like to see more cycling? Would you like to see less pollution? 
Everything is presented in the form of a benefit. So there are always the real and the stated goals. The stated goals have nothing to do with the real goals whatsoever. So once people know this has nothing to do with the environment, it's to do with control and management. And your councils are now with stakeholders. Everything's corporate. Everything's corporations. So the yes, the when I was at the Elephant and Castle Regeneration Scheme, uh, they had the open meeting. If you go to involve.org, you'll see the picture of exactly what it looked like. Ten people on each table, facilitator on each table. And a fellow there was was uh, from a local business and they said, oh, we've consulted local businesses. And he said, well, I wasn't consulted. And they go, oh, I'm very sorry. We'll have to try a bit harder to get the message out to people. And he said, well, you'll have to try a lot harder because I've got another 800 here. So yeah, none of yeah. the businesses had been consulted at all. It's about destroying self-employment. Now, some people turn around and they go, but the self-employed people are paying the taxes and they're employing people. This system doesn't need any of that. They've embarked on a project which is mass depopulation. And I think people will know what's happened over the past. We won't go into that because it's YouTube, but people will know what's happened. And that everything they're doing is to drive more corporate takeover of everything and to, to depopulate. And everything else is about control. So the end game is depopulation. The middle ground is about control and, and basically destroying any dissent. And we can see that now with the way the laws have changed. As we said, there's an article at windowsontheworld.net called How, Communi How UK Communitarian Courts Operate. Have a look at that. And I think another thing that's interesting is the way people are being steered into different areas of protest now. They're dissipating everything. So people have to be focused, I think, on the local issues. It's all in what the globalists are doing is all in your local town hall. It doesn't matter about the Klaus Schwab's, the people in Switzerland. Everything that they're talking about is in your local council. And that's where it hits you. It hits you locally. It's global to local. So it's a global project but it's all implemented locally by change agents and people who are acting on your behalf. Fascinating stuff. I love it. Mm. It's really inspiring. Does it make sense, Shelley? Yeah. Does this make yeah, sense? Yeah, def you? definitely. Yeah. yeah. I can just see it more and more, like I said, the last few months, especially. And I've often thought about running for council and stuff. And people say, I mean, Jonathan Tilt, I don't know if you know Jonathan Tilt, but he was um, implementing that if if we was to get two councillors elected in each area, I can't remember what you call it, um, yeah. but two councillors that on, can actually bring about change if they're on the same wavelength, so to speak, inside the council. Um, I don't know. It's a whole, I've, I ran for it in the whole um four years ago when we were going through these freedom fights and everything and it yeah. was quite interesting because I, I went with freedom alliance i'm not really a political i say i'm not a political person i am because i'd love to make changes like all of us like you all your research and you're doing and stuff but i think people are put off and think if you you know but how do you help how do you bring about change i mean well, you're I bringing think... out the information but people that yes. want to be active i mean what do you think about like the whole farming situation at the moment well, it, the whole point is they want these corporates to be taken over all the farming. Um, basically, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's control of everything. So the farmers, we were talking about that today, actually. And, of course, in Wales, they, they want 10% rewilding. They want another 10% of the farmland given over. Well, this is just exactly what they did during communism, you see. It's, it's taking, it's appropriating the land. But what they're saying is you can't grow on it. And yes, the, the control of the food supply is obviously paramount. So I would say that, that people in farming need to realize that this agenda is as we state. It's, it's nothing to do with the environment. I think a lot of people know that. But they have to engage locally and they have to form groups now one thing i would say is that the unions have been pretty much taken over so you've got to be careful with unions but i as think as in infiltrated yes 
Um, I, a lot of the a lot of the unions have been taken over by Marxists, really, or people who are trained in Marxism. And I know this to be true with the major unions. Now, the farming union, I don't know too much about, actually. I had a great friend called Edmund Marriage. He's died now. He, he, he was related, I think it was his uncle who wrote The Genius of the Few, Christian O'Brien, about the first ag agrarian civilization, allegedly, in Sumeria. And um, he, he was giving me a lot of information about that. And he was trying to get them to see this bigger picture. Because I think the, the main problem is that people, they're not, they're not thinking big enough. They, you see, the globalists think big. The public have been kind of indoctrinated to think small. If you think big and then you put it down to local, that's what it is. It's a massive plan, a global agenda, but it's all local. Yes. So, I mean, without going into great detail on the farming thing, um, it's very important that that they stand up. I mean, I know that they have done in to a certain extent in the Netherlands and across Europe. In fact, even in Bulgaria, that they're standing up because they, there's the, the agenda. It, it it changes slightly from country to country. This is another thing that's quite interesting in that the, the system of moods they they used to call it. It means that. Certain people, certain racial characteristics uh, work in different ways. So some people will be more militant. Some people will um, be more passive. And some people will, will kind of accept certain things. Other people won't. So what they do is they, they tailor it. So it looks as though they're going to have a say everywhere. Do you see what I mean? It's, yeah, that's yeah. the thing about communitarianism. It's, it's something that I think even the people that I know in America talk about it because it's such a big system. They, they, they use a lot of phrases which would actually confuse the public. And I'm trying to make it really simple. It's, it's a global action plan implemented at local level. And the people who are implementing it define themselves as a community, but they're not the community. You're the community, so you have to take back that word community from them and take back what it means. Otherwise, their version of community is this consensus reality where you are going to lose everything. And it's, it's a very audacious plan. And it was purely brought in for looting the, the assets and the global commons of the world. That's really what it's for. So it's a looting operation. It's nothing to do with the environment. It has nothing to do with it whatsoever. And that's what people have to be able to separate. Once you separate that, you, you start to get it. Everything's been planned, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's very meticulously planned. But in a way, as I said, it's not, it's not indestructible because, you see, it relies on public ignorance. So what we need to do is educate people in these very simple principles. The Saul Alinsky rules, the way change agents come through these organizations. There were things like Unlimited, which is in about 100 countries. Just as the way that media action from the BBC trains so-called journalists. They're not journalists. They're propagandists, which is why you've got countries which throw these people out. And then you get people up in arms about it as though these countries are anti-democratic no they're not anti-democratic they don't want infiltration that's why Orban in Hungary was saying we need to, a law so NGOs cannot establish themselves from outside with outside interests in our country so of course then he's far right but he's one of the only global leaders that talks about it some of the African leaders do because they know they know about it you see right yeah. And and you get but that's the but I think Auburn is about the only person who, who's ever actually said that that the NGOs are the infiltration program. And of course the, it can get to the point of having a coup against the government. This recently happened, didn't it? Was it it wasn't Serbia, was it Croatia? I can't remember now. It was so much happens, doesn't it? But it yeah, was yeah. it was um it, it was it, you see this is the thing about it. The other thing is that none of it's real. It's all like theatre. It's all, it's all fake. There's no, there's no reality to any of it. And that's all part of it as well, because it's like this drone society. 
So, oh, yeah, if you want to protest, there's your banner. We'll put you on the bus, walk around, have a, have a good day with your, with your fellow protesters, have a few drinks in the pub and go home. Nothing's going to change. No. no. That, I don't think it was ever as controlled. I think the, the poll tax riots was the last time that anything spontaneous actually happened in Britain. Because that oh, was I would love like that, genuine, yeah. wasn't it? It uh, was. They, I, yeah. If they would do something like that now, I mean, it's got to be, I think, just mass non-compliance to sort things out. I think out. we have to take issues from history as well. Look at the Peasants' Revolt. I mean, what Tyler came up from Kent, went to Smithfield, and he was stabbed to death. So these people do not play on a level ground. So, you know, that was 1388. But... It, they don't. They're not going to openly stab you to death, but they'll just take you down some other way. That all they have to do is, yeah. Well, well the, <laughs> first they demonetize your YouTube channel, then they pull it down. <laughs> do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, it's like we all know how how we get shut down, and and because it's like mimetic warfare, we have to be able to approach them under their own terms. Otherwise, they're going to defeat us every time. Like you said, you know, you went into the council meeting and they, they know what to do psychologically. But yeah. if you know what their psychology is, then you can make an impression. And it needs the public to realise that they really are not being given any input into anything. And they're paying all this council tax and it's going to go up. And the councils are declaring bankruptcy and they're giving themselves 100 grand a year, these people, more than 100 grand a year, plus whatever else they're getting. Plus, of course, all their links to the uh, developers through the, the NGOs. All these people are getting backhanders. It's, a, it's an entirely corrupt system, but that suits it because the, the greedy and corrupt will be the useful idiots out there who are going to screw you down. But it's never been any different, really, has it? I was well, thinking about I this think... earlier, walking my dog. I've just like, yes. since the start of time, there's always been the leaders, you know, that have got everything and the poor people. And I've well, been I looking... Think that if Sorry. we look at it as a technocratic thing, because things have changed, haven't they? Mm -hmm. So technocracy means that every action is taken into account and it's monitored. So what it is all about is the distribution and control of energy. You have a certain, this new communitarian system, it's, it puts you into social credit. It, it, it takes you as basically a piece of meat, a, bio, a biological piece of meat, um, godless biological piece of meat, by the way, and atheistic, and it steers you into certain behavior patterns. And most people will fall into those behavior patterns, whether they like it or not. So it doesn't matter whether you're for the agenda or against it, they're still steering you. So the, th this, this system is, is different, but in a way, it's not much different from what happened during communism. But they're not going to go around um, murdering as many people. They're going to do it in a, diff in a scientific dictatorship kind of way. And we know what ways they've got to do that and how to make that compulsory. Um, so, yeah, what, once you've tied this together with the UN documents, the UN goals, and the communitarian system, the communitarian system is kind of the software of the whole thing. It's the people power thing, the way that people are controlled. And whenever you see people power, it's them, it's not you. Same as the community, same as grassroots. So what they've done is hijacked all these terms to make it sound as though people are having a say. And, and that's the trick. So in other words, it's different from the old system of totalitarianism. It's totalitarianism that masks itself as community. That's the new word for totalitarianism, community. Right, right. So that's the difference. There's not much difference in the way they're doing it. It's just, it's a bit of a slicker operation because they, they don't want to look as though it's a dictatorship. No, they're making it look like you've got a choice where there exactly. is no choice, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fascinating stuff. Well, we've just got a few... We've got five minutes left, Mark. Is there any way where you want to go in particular? Not like really. I mean, I, I just think that <laughs> if, if people get hold of these basic principles, things can change. And I've been talking about it for so long that 
it's not that I've run out of things to say. It's just that it's fairly simple and people are still getting distracted. So don't be distracted onto what they want you to be distracted onto. Focus locally. Just have a look at that, that article, Empower Your Community. Look at all the stuff on it. It, it's not it's not that complicated. You're not going to have to read for hours to learn about it. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. And and if people can grasp it, then th they have a much better chance of not only navigating their way through what's coming, but also to do something about it and change it. Yeah. But it has to be the people that change it. It has it to does. be. It does, and I think... Yeah. For, for those of us that are so-called, I hate that word, awake, but we know what's mm. going on, it is about dropping hints and talking to people. And I was just talking to my local butcher last week who's not got a clue about what's going on with the whole farming thing. You know, this is his livelihood. But the attitude was, you know, I said about agenda um, fifth, by 2050, you know, the plan of no meat and stuff. And he said, oh, well, I won't be here then. And well, so many people have got this attitude, the... haven't they? Yes, the, it's people have been dumbed down into a very selfish, self-centered kind of view of the world. And yes, it's I tend to see the bigger picture, and I don't put myself in it that much. But m most people do. It's the other way around, isn't it? They put themselves as the picture, but I'm seeing the bigger picture, and I'm thinking, well, what am I good at? I can put it out there and try and decode it because I've, I've now experienced, I've, I've looked into it all. I've put it all together and it's dead simple. It's actually really simple. But if anything is the takeaway from that tonight, yeah, just have a look at what I've been saying. Maybe have a listen to some of the shows. There's a, there's a, an article called what is communitarianism or the, sorry, the communitarian agenda explained the communitarian agenda explained, put communitarianism into windows on the world. I'm going to listen to some stuff. I mean, it's, you'll grasp it because this is not a comp. If, if this system was complicated, it couldn't be imposed in all these different countries. It has to be fairly simple. You see, and the people who are doing it are not very bright. So it has to be simple. It has to reward the greedy and it has to train people into sound bites, train people into what we could call liars, because that's what it's about. It's about presenting the, the stated goals as the real goals, when, of course, they're not. And I think that's the thing. So, yeah, and I would advise people to form small groups of people they know and try and get something going. We, there are people doing stuff, but it's best to not get drawn into the bigger groups because they're all steered. That's the, that's the key because it's communitarianism again, you see. So the globalists need the anti-globalists too. So if an anti-globalist, they need you because this is called a system and they are trying to make sure that there's something for everybody or it appears there's something for everybody. You so almost get to the point, I think, as well, that you think, I just don't know what to think anymore. Who to believe? Who, you know, because everybody's selling themselves. Yeah. Um, like I, I interviewed a guy a couple of weeks ago from the community assembly, not the citizen assemblies. I love yeah. the idea. It sounds great. Um, but it's just got me questioning so much. And I'm thinking there's too Anything many that collectivizes people is part of this plan. That's why I'm not popular with some of these um, shows now, because I call things out. Because it's too late. We haven't got time to get collectivized anymore. Anything uh, that no. collectivizes people in large groups is communitarianism. And people are going to say, oh, that's really negative. It's not. It's entirely positive. Because when you know how this works, as you said, Shelley, you can't unsee it, can you? No, you can't. You, can. you can't unsee it. Once yeah. you've seen it, you can't unsee it. So that, to me, is a big part of being so-called awake. Because when you can see the system properly... Not just what they're doing, but see the system, how they're working it and how simple it is, yet how big it is. Then you can take action. And we need to be able to debate and talk about these things, don't we? I mean, part of me thinks, would it be great if we set up a national like speaker's corner in every town, in the town square every Saturday, you know, like they do at Hyde Park? 
um, people need to get talking about. But people, it's getting people interested in it as well. I think there's too many people, like you say, that they're, they're all for self. I, I don't care. I'm all right. And um, and I think I lots think of people... It's, it's very like that in Britain because even though, you know, I, I saw... An, a, a, Sorry, we're going out now, aren't we? We're, so we're thanks going out. Lot, Kelly. We'll continue this Thank anytime you, you like. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, we will because um, we can talk for hours. Mark Absolutely. Windows, everybody. Visit his website, Thank Mark everyone. Windows on the net. Mark Windows, Windows on the world. world. Net. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Mark. Take care. Please, Kelly. Take care. And for anybody staying on, the Kerno Connection will be on next um, with myself and Malifica Scott. Um, hope you have an awesome weekend. We shall be talking some Kono stuff. Have a great week. Bye.